Stephanie in Wrexham is in the numbers game. And the numbers game is what politicians will be playing over the coming weeks. The Conservatives and Lib Dems will use them to show they've brought recovery and growth to the Welsh economy. Tina, who runs the business, thinks things are picking up. We're not an essential product to buy, but we are seeing an upturn in people buying our products, which seems to suggest to me that there is some kind of uh, impetus in the economy so people have got more disposable income to spend on things that they don't necessarily need but want to improve their homes. So do the numbers back that up? Let's take growth. Wales's GVA, the value of what we make and do, increased faster than almost anywhere else in the UK last year. But we're still at the bottom of the pile. GVA is just 72% of the UK average. And disposable income? The signs are that it's up a little in Wales. But for engraver David, pay is still a key election issue. What sort of promises do you want from a potential government? More, more money, more, like higher wages for more skilled jobs, like people that work in hospitals and things like that. I think they deserve more. The TUC says wages have really fallen by £40 a week in Wales since 2010, when you take price rises into account. Plaid Cymru and Labour will be keen to exploit that. But Labour won't want to portray the Welsh economy as broken. Let's use this company's artwork to explain. In practical terms, the politicians in Westminster and Cardiff Bay turn the cogs on the economy. Their policies can help determine whether the economy goes forward or whether it goes into reverse. When things go well, Labour in Wales and the coalition in Westminster tend to like to take the credit. And when things go in reverse, they tend to blame.